Hello, shooters. My name is James Toll, and you're watching the American Trigger Sports Network, your station for live news and available to you 24-7 on your computer when you want to see it. And right here on your favorite Pursuit channel three times a week. On today's show, we sit down with host of Armed American Radio, Mark Walters. Mark is a full-time concealed weapons citizen. He has successfully defended himself against one of today's most common crimes, carjacking. So we asked Mark to walk with us through a few scenarios of everyday life, and we called it, What Would You Do? Hi, Mark. How are you? Doing good, James. How are you, everybody? Yeah, I'm good. Listen, I just want to start out by saying that I think you're one of the most conscientious armed citizens we talk to on this show. And around the studio, we respectfully have a nickname for you. We call you Marshall Mark. Marshall Mark. Okay. <laughs> so where are we going this week, Marshall? Well, James, we have talked about living an armed lifestyle on American Trigger Sports in the past, and I touch on it a lot on the radio. In fact, I think, believe I'm going to take the uh, full three-hour broadcast this weekend and discuss that armed lifestyle. It winds up being, without a doubt, the most popular segments that we do. We get tremendous feedback because people who have and carry a gun or are thinking about it want to know the answers to those questions. You know, how do I incorporate this into my lifestyle? And as the video showed you, I think that there are two issues that are incredibly important that can make or break your success in living an armed lifestyle. Your behavior while armed, number one, whether you're openly carrying or concealed, doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter if anybody can see the firearm or not. How you behave matters. And the other uh, aspect that we'll touch on later in, uh, in this broadcast is uh, not just your behavior, but your appearance. How, how do you appear? But your behavior, James, is very important because it how you appear or how you behave when you're carrying can and more than likely will determine how you respond in the event that you might be attacked or you might even perceive an attack, if that makes sense. No, no, no it makes perfect sense, and I think it's a good topic. Uh, I think that uh, we, we have to consider uh, what we're doing, when we're doing it, and how we're going to do it, and uh, this is something that is becoming very modern, very in in many areas. Uh, an armed lifestyle has become uh, something that we all should be considering, and I know that you have been doing it for probably many years. So Correct. that's why we think that you're probably one of the best experts we have on this subject, actually, and I agree with you 100%. The Living the armed lifestyle is more than just carrying a gun, James, as we've discussed. It's, it is truly living the part. It's breathing the part. Uh, you know, in my book in Chapter 1, I, as you know and as, as the audience knows, uh, regular viewers and listeners to the radio broadcast know that I had to pull a gun to defend my life back in 2002. I didn't see any other alternative. I was boxed in and had nowhere to go. And I write in my first chapter of my book, uh, in my own story, that a criminal had a 50-50 shot of running into an armed victim if they decided to attack me because I had not yet made that decision in my own mind to live an armed lifestyle. I was very fortunate and lucky that day. Yeah. So I've made the necessary changes. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up because we got a few questions for you that probably sure. goes through everybody's mind. And uh, we put some scenarios together along with some questions, and we want to get your response to these, okay? Sure. Absolutely. Let's have at it. All right. You ready? Ready. Roll that first question. If you were hijacked, what would you do? Something fascinating in that video. If you take a look at that video, if, if there were a way we could replay that, what you're going to see is the individual getting out of that car was absolutely paying no attention to his surroundings. None. He had his face in what appeared to be a phone or a piece of paper, whatever it was he was looking at. The attack came at lightning speed behind him. The first thing, first and foremost, is you must absolutely be aware of your surroundings. If you are armed, you're probably not going to be walking around with your face buried in the phone or your face buried in a notebook like this or getting out of car and fumbling with your briefcase concerned about something else. You absolutely must be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, and and you know, you, how many times have you heard us say it, James? 
preparation, avoidance, and awareness, everybody. It's incredibly important, and that is why. That individual probably had absolutely no chance to retrieve a firearm, and if that were me, I would like to say that I would happen to be a little bit better prepared to not let that happen. He had. Where did that individual come from? How many times have we seen a car accident, James, and you hear the response, well, the guy came out of nowhere. No, a 3,000-pound speeding automobile does not come out of nowhere. You weren't paying attention. Right. Okay, well, let me, let me throw this angle in there then. Suppose sure. you're walking through the parking lot and you see that take place. That's exactly where I wanted to go with you next. I'm glad you brought that up. We can probably do that in the other scenarios as well. If you're an armed citizen, it's my personal belief, if you see that go down, you have a moral obligation to get involved if you see that. That, to me, appeared to be a very clear-cut case of a carjacking. Now, in some of the other instances we'll take a look at, your best bet is going to be to walk away, call 911, and not get involved. Okay, so you draw your weapon, and you would try to prevent anything further from happening. That's, that's your answer. In that exact scenario yeah. that we saw on film, and it were visible to me, and I had the opportunity to help, and that individual's life appeared to be on the line as it did, I would probably have gotten involved. Yes, sir. Okay. Roll a second question. What would you do? We'll be right back with Mark Walters and the answer to that question. Okay, you now witness a fight. Right. What are you going to do? I think the safest bet in that case is to pick the phone up and call 911. Everybody's got a cell phone. It's impossible to discern exactly what sparked that. It's, very, it's going to be a very rare case that the individual that you happen to see that, you don't know what transpired beforehand. And it, it's, it's almost impossible. I've, I've had conversations with one of the best self-defense uh, self experts in the business. You know him very well, Masad Ayub, and we talk about it all the time. If you don't know what happened, do not inject yourself into that scenario. You might be harmed, and the next thing you know in a domestic dispute, as you know from talking to how many law enforcement personnel over the years, it's the most dangerous thing they can do is make, is make that uh, domestic dispute, domestic disturbance call. You don't willfully inject yourself in there. You're not law enforcement. Yeah. Back and, off, call 911 and try to save a life. In, this, in that particular instance, I think you need to be the best witness that law enforcement can get, come up with. You absolutely can. Kind of uncanny, too. It looked like those were law enforcement personnel around there. Yeah, so whoever saying, yeah, was yeah. doing what they were doing had some guts. <laughs> that was the best example I could come up with. But I got another <laughs> one for you. Roll the next question. Let's do it. Okay, you witness a harassment by a flash mob. What do you do? That's an interesting one. Flash mob seems to be a fairly new phenomenon, doesn't it? It's something that's happening with uh, it, it, at increased frequency that we hear about. I've not personally witnessed one, and I haven't, I haven't talked to anybody about it on air. I haven't brought an expert in. I think that's a great question. My advice in that scenario would be, and if it were me personally, I would immediately leave the area. I would. You, you, how many times do you hear me say, trust your gut? You know what your gut instinct is telling you. You know when a situation, you can feel something coming. If you get that feeling, trust your gut instinct, leave the area. I think the old uh, Eddie Eagle from the NRA, trust your gut, and, and the Eddie Eagle teaches you, stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. In this case, I would recommend getting out of Dodge as fast as possible. But I certainly wouldn't be compelled to draw my weapon in a crowd like that. You could certainly incite a lot more violence and, and, and cause a lot more problems. But again, it's impossible to say. If it were me the one being attacked and my life were on the line, I know what I would do. I have done it before. Okay. Again, I believe that you could be the best possible witness by... And, That's right. and, and if, you, if you're not involved in it, if you can safely remove yourself from the situation, you can be a great witness for law enforcement. I got more questions. You know, that's the same type of situation, something very similar to what we just discussed. It's, 
these scenarios can, you know, they're, they're going to happen at lightning speed. The only, the best defense that you have, I, I would quote from my good friend Rob Pincus, the best defense that you have is to be prepared for them. Avoid the situation at all costs. Don't go into the convenience store at 3 o'clock in the morning for that Slurpee. Go home. All right. If you're hungry, maybe hit a drive through. Don't get out of your car in an area. You know, look, they call them stop and robs for a reason. All you're doing is putting yourself in a position where you may become a potential, a potential victim. If you can avoid being there, avoid being there. Now, let's say, for example, in this case, you can't. Again, the advice that Masad gave is outstanding. Just like we said in the last uh, in the last example, try to remove yourself, put cover between you and the and the uh, the shooter. And like you, James, I happen to agree with you. If the shooting starts and the clerk's been shot and killed, you, you are armed. I think you might have a moral obligation. But your life, you have people depending on you. It will depend at that moment in time. Your main objective is to stay alive and go home. And only you can make that decision as right. that type of scenario unfolds. Shooters, we are bringing you these real-life scenarios because we know and you know that the armed lifestyle is becoming a reality for many of us. We hope that you are not in a situation like this, but we encourage you to watch the rest of the program, and if you have any comments or questions, please email us. Hi, Shooters. We're here with Mark Walters, host of Armed American Radio. We're running through some scenarios as an armed citizen, what your responses may be. I got another question for you, Mark. Fire away. They're great. If you're being robbed at gunpoint, what would you do? Again, if I can get away, I'm going to try to get away. I don't think in that situation on the video we looked at, you know, let's put a couple assumptions. Let's assume your back is against the wall. You can't get away. If you're forced to defend your life, this is why how you, uh, whether you've practiced, whether you carry on a regular basis, whether you are armed is going to do, is going to make a difference as to whether or not you can deploy your firearm in an attempt to save your life. If there's a gun at me, and I have an opportunity to use mine and draw mine to defend my life, I'll do so if I can do it safely and avoid any further conflict or action between the two of us. If not, you've got to wait for the right time. It's very difficult, as you know, James, to draw, uh, to outdraw a drawn weapon. You've got to look at this and scenario this, and this, how it unfolds. Again, right. the best thing, avoid it if possible. And this is the reason why you are armed. I mean, this is the case scenario here where you, someone has drawn down on you, they're asking for your money. As you said, you now have to weigh this situation, knowing where your gun is, knowing the position of the gun that's on you. And there's probably several techniques here that you probably should have practiced, and you need to make a decision now, am I going to get into a gunfight and try to shoot this man, or am I going to give him the money and walk away? But remember, when you walked out that door, the reason why you put on that gun was to prevent this from happening to you. So there's a lot of, and I don't think, Mark, honestly, you know, even yourself, I mean this generally speaking, you never really, you think about it's going to happen, but you know, it happens, and to use your expression, happens in such lightning speed that all of a sudden you've got a gun in your chest, and That's it's right. like, okay, okay, I think I'm going to give this guy the money, and, uh, okay, the gun's in my chest. He's got a cock gun to me. I don't think I'm going to, at this point, try to outshoot him. This isn't the old West right. here. This is the wrong time to go for your gun unless there's a distraction or you feel safe enough to go for your weapon or you have practiced a technique to brush his away. And I, I know Mossad would probably know that, for instance. We've used him as a couple of examples, and, and Rob Pincus as well. They probably That's correct. Now is not the time to, to act like the tough guy, James. Right. Let's put it that way. If you don't have the technique, if you're not willing to take that next step there and risk your life possibly, then the best thing to do is give him the money. If you have the technique or if there is a distraction and he looks away for some ridiculous reason, yeah, this is why you put out a gun that morning. Your training, as in anything else, your training will come out when the chips come down. Yeah, right. It's that simple. These are techniques that you can you can practice at home. You can dry fire at home. You can watch if you can't get in. Look, I, look, I know what it's like to be down to my last fifty bucks, James. And if and a lot of people can't afford to take some of the high power training, some from of the from some of the larger gunfighting schools. 
Shooters, I want to stop right here, actually, because I have a comment that I think is important at this point. When you go out at night with your family, or even your friends, you need to have a plan. They need to know that you're armed. Your family probably does. Your friends may not. But there needs to be some instructions, something put on the table, saying that if we are into a confrontation, this is what I'm going to do, this is what you're going to do. Keep that in mind. All right, we're here with uh, Mark Walters, the host of Armed American Radio. We run through some scenarios on what might happen to you as an armed citizen if you choose to be armed, and, and certainly Mark would be one of the people who would encourage you to do so. I, I would also if it's legal in, in your area. Uh, but the next question, and it's a little further in, and, and, and this is a delicate one. Okay, so you walk out the door, you're armed, and now you have the responsibility of packing a gun. Uh, and how you dress, eh, let's talk about dress for success. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Your appearance matters. The best, this is, this is a fun topic, and I inevitably, when I discuss this, I, and I hate to use the term hate mail, but I get some of the mail from folks who say, hey, I can dress how I want. I'm not breaking any laws. I can look any way I want to look. And my response to that is, that, yeah, you can. You can. But grow up and act your age. Let's face facts. <laughs> we saw in the previous segment, James, the example of someone witnessing an attack. And, and you put it in the perspective that what would I do if I witnessed that attack? Let's put in perspective. Now, you're dressed like a slob. However you define dressed like a slob. Maybe you're dressed like a punk. Maybe you like wearing hoodies and a pair of torn up jeans, and that's fine. When you're armed and you look like that, there's an attack. Let's face it. Let's be realistic. Those two individuals may be doing absolutely nothing wrong. They may be lawfully packing a gun. If you witness an attack, who are you going to instinctively think is the perpetrator in that situation. You've got to think ahead. You've got to use your head. I'm not trying to insult anyone. I'm trying to say, be realistic here. Let's face facts. I'm not saying that you have to wear a suit and tie. We all saw Donald Trump in the video. You can certainly draw attention to yourself even if you're in a suit and tie. But when you're armed, you are living to a higher, you've got to live up to a higher standard, James, when you're carrying deadly force. And that's what your firearm is. It is a weapon. It is an object of deadly force. You've got to live to that higher, to that higher standard. Yeah, Pack uh, you, the gun and do it, do it properly. Yeah, you know, I would even go one step more than that even. That, that if you are armed, and, and you have to understand that if something does take place, uh, when law enforcement arrives... They are basically going to profile you from the moment they step out of that car. That's and, absolutely correct. And, you know, How and, you and if, and if, other you, want, if you if you choose to dress slovenly that day, and I mean that nicely, I'm not trying to. You know, everybody's got their own. Per but if you choose to wear a gun and dress less than presentable to a situation, then you're, you're probably not going to get the kinds of respect that. Uh, you deserve, number one, when law enforcement arrives. And if you're in the midst of a shootout, hey, uh, you know, the, 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 the cops are going to say, well, who's the bad guy here? The, the, That's <laughs> right. Look, there are going to be witnesses. Yeah, yeah and, and that, that, that certainly does not mean that if you have a tuxedo on that, the, right. that law enforcement is going to say, oh, yeah, well, he must be James Bond. He's the good guy. I, I don't mean to, uh, to indicate that at all either. But, you know, given the, the, the circumstances of today and the events that take place, I think it's pretty important that if you choose to wear a gun that day, and it's legal where you're doing this, then you also need to give some thought to how am I going to dress. Yes, I'm going to dress to conceal the weapon properly, but what is my dress going to consist of? And, uh, you know, we're going to run a few examples here of different methods, and we've all seen many of them. But uh, I think the point here is that you need to be conscious of the way you look because you're in a different mode when That's you right. are carrying a deadly weapon. You're not going out to play basketball. You know, I, if, you know that's a, it's a different situation here. So uh, I think that point is probably very little talked about, and, and I'm starting to get some emails here on it now. Oh, you'll get a, yeah, you'll get a bunch of them. <laughs> the, the fact is, James, you're, you're absolutely correct. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm not saying, and I don't want viewers to misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you have to get dressed up to carry a firearm that day. Look, I'm a jeans and t-shirt type of guy. It's just the way I am. 
and I have the luxury of being able to wear that clothing when I want to. I tend not to tuck my clothes in. I can carry it. It makes it easier for me to carry a firearm. But you can still be a jeans and T-shirt type of guy and not look like a punk, quite frankly. Right. there are How you appear to other people matters. Whether we like that or not, it's just a fact of life. Yeah. It's a simple fact of life, and we have to accept that. You know, it's 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 kind of like a, a driver and insurance. As we age, our insurance rates go down because as we age and we grow up and we mature, we tend to realize some things that we didn't realize when we were 16 through 25, maybe or even 35. Uh, that that what our actions have 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 ramifications, and we have to take responsibility. That's why our rates go down. We become more in touch with our mortality as we age and as we grow up and as we carry a firearm. And it you've got it's a mature. Probably the most, it is, I'll go on record as saying it is the single most important decision you may ever make in your lifetime to make a decision to carry deadly force. And if you're going to make that decision, you must be responsible and act accordingly. And appearance has a lot to do with that. Unfortunately, yeah. it's a fact. And let me get this in because we're running out of time, Mark. But there is a picture, and I'm going to ask him to put that picture back up of the tourists. If you choose to dress like this, you, and I'm not saying that there isn't people out there that do, but I got to tell you, that's a target. That's just a target. <laughs> if I, I'll never forget my father telling me when I was about 16 or 17 years old and I ventured to New York City for the first time by myself, put the camera away. Don't get caught looking up at the buildings. Again, these are preparation, avoidance, and awareness techniques. And what my father was telling me then, without coming out and saying it, was, don't look like the tourist. You're going to become a target. And there's truth to those words. If you look like it, that's the way you I, I want gotta it. Go. <laughs> I got to go, Mark. Thanks very much. And I know I'll get a lot of response on this, and I'll get back to you on it. Looking forward to it. A lot of fun. Thanks, James. Bye-bye. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed today's show. This was a special show, and we have more of them coming up to you in the future where we take up a specific subject and we ask for your questions and comments. See you next week.